for for Q. So the, the overall direction is up right now. Um, what time frame? What what time frame are you on? It's the age sixteen. Yeah, I'm sixteen. What? It's similar to a daily time frame. It's similar to daily. The no, daily. it's not. It's not a daily. If it was similar to daily, then it would be the daily. All right. Um, I said this is a surprise me. <laughs> what? Higher, higher, right? So surprise me. Higher, no, higher. I, I, I told you earlier, like, UJ is the H4. Yeah. All right, so the overall direction is the daily. UJ is the H4. So I'll go down to the, the, the H4. So, um... <laughs> Look at the structure. So it did a high, high, and it went to the same Briefly, being a downtrend, correct? It's an uptrend. It's a, it's a downtrend like, like, why are you thinking about a downtrend when it's just in consolidation? It's, it hasn't even broke structure yet. Like, UJ is still making higher low points. It's, it's nothing says downtrend right now for, for UJ at this current moment. Even on the daily time frame, you're in on a bullish candle, not a bearish candle. So, why are you thinking about a downtrend? All right, so you and face um, sellers here. So, um, all right, so I'll, I'll exit right here and then let's watch the market um, progress as it progresses. All right, so only manage um, orders in, 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 in a market that's, that's trending in the direction of the, the higher time frame. So, so that's the, the simplest way you can do it. That's the, that's, that's the smartest way. Like, why, like, why are you counter trending? Like, you're going against everybody. All right. Um, let me ask you another question. Um, based on the the higher time frame level. Alex, right? I feel you. <laughs> All right, but remember, like, I have to get to other people' questions also because, like, I'm not really sure on like what you're trying to ask me in total. Like, I'm trying to tell you, like, you're you're you gotta actually base your your main time frame off of a certain time frame, and you're still doing um doing like everything else. I don't know, like, why the hell you're using H sixteen? Honestly, like, I don't really see the, see, don't see the point of that. <laughs> All right, then. Um, That's the biggest right, so thing. You can ask other, per other person, ask questions, and then I'll just okay. answer and then Definitely. And add more questions. Whenever. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Um, okay, all right. <laughs> Let me get to these um, questions. Oh, shit. I'm big as hell. <coughs> yeah, mainly, like, I don't think you um seen, like, my training, though, honestly. Like, based off the way how, how you are analyzing, like, I don't. That's not my style personally like then you would already know like how i actually base my, my time frames and and everything else um if you're like really like paying attention to like the way how i trade Just laggy as hell, yo. Shit. All right, God damn. Okay. All right, let me not. I'm not gonna these questions now. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, so like, how's everybody doing? Um. Thanks everyone for actually coming on this webinar. This this webinar overall is just a Q and A for, for things that you guys have issues with. Well, when do you place an entry and how long till you exit? Okay, so Christian asks, when do I place an entry and how long till I exit? That depends. Like every single trade, you know, like it, it's a different situation every single time, different case. You can't really compare two trades together because you're entering and exiting for all the um, different reasons for it each and every order i thought there was supposed to be 700 on the webinar um do you really want there to be 700 people and not get any kind of help alex no exactly so uh, why are you worried about it being less people all right so um you said for gj you should look for structure on the daily time frame yes um okay so if i'm basing 
starts off of GJ, GBT JPY. Mainly because I said that um this th this chart is based off of the daily time frame because this chart is a lot more volatile than UJ. So pretty much like when it comes to like you you actually analyzing in, in a noisy market, you have to actually learn how to cancel out all the noise. Hold on, let me, let me try to You gotta cancel out the noise. So like going on the daily time frame, it pretty much cancels out a lot of the um noise and everything that GJ does make. See like how on, on this time frame you can actually identify where you're yeah, I'm trying to like um push it in actually. On this time frame, which is the um, daily time frame, you're able to actually see your higher high points and higher low points, which pretty much tells you if the market is pretty much trending or not trending. See like how how we have a higher high point like right here and then a retest area. Let me highlight these part for you guys. So you have your higher high here, and then you have your retest, which is 100% re retrace. Actually, not 100% retrace, but just a full retest of the previous level of resistance. So this right here is a straight con consolidation around this area. Oh, yeah, I want it wider. I have all these questions I, I got to answer. All right, is better? Yes, yes. All right, perfect. All right, so pretty much, um, like, see now how we have, you have your low points on GJ so that's right here because you always want to like base your level of support off of an average of price. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's never support or resistance is never like the highest point or never like the the lowest point. It's always like an average of average area around like a, a weak point. So see like how I have like right here. This area, like, I wouldn't base my level of support all the way down here or even, like, like right here. I, I want to base it at a point that pretty much all the wicks inside that area touch. And on this side, you have that 100% retrace, which is just a retest area. So we literally had just consolidation around this, this entire point right here. So seeing that it's not breaking support, right? What the hell? Oh, is, is everybody on track? Yes, yes. Okay, all right, make sure, all right, make sure. All right, cool. All right, so pretty much, like, seeing how we have, like, a level of support, like, right here, and then you use your, your fibs just to make sure that it's 100% retrace. Boom. All the way up here to that level of resistance based off of this point right here. Um, let me serve for you guys. Uh, all right. It's based off of that, that blue wick, like, right there on that level of resistance. So we had, like, almost 100% retrace. Which is still significant for a higher low point in this case because it actually retested at 88.6, which is fine. So like it's still considered as a higher low point, which is just steep as hell. So like even if I was like on this entire trend like right here, you're still expecting higher high points because you're still on overall uptrend, and the low points are not being broken. Like they're still being respected. So like you're always going to be expecting a higher high point. Period. All right. So like when the market even got down to this low point right here, breaking it down to this area, you're, you're able to see a transition around this point right here. Like, all right, let's keep that area in mind. I'm gonna highlight this area a different color. So when we on low time frames, you guys can actually understand what's going on. Okay, so like, let's go to like, like first, like the, all right, if you're basing your structure off of the, the daily chart, like it's good to, to go on like H1, because you're seeing a lot more details inside um, that chart or inside that, that trend, which shows you a better trend, like transition from a downtrend to an uptrend. So many people are messing me right now. God damn. Uh, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. Let me go back. All right. So this is the same area that that pretty much support was on on that daily time frame, like right here, right? Y'all remember that area? Can you guys recall that area on the daily time frame? All right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So, overall, like, it, it, if you're looking at structure on this time frame first, right, you're seeing your, your overall downtrend, which was this big push all the way down here, right? And then you had your main level of resistance broken, which was around this area. Mainly because this right here is, is the last lower high point of this entire downtrend right here. So this area right here, hold on, let me just dig it up.
let me take off this green thing. All right, let's focus on this area. So this right here is the last area of resistance, like right over here. All right, or you you can probably even base it off of. Let me try to find an average. All right. So this right here was a high that had to even be broken, which is around what price is this? Around 107,777, which is like that last level of resistance that had to be broken. So like once that area was broken right here, when the market came back up to the zone and consolidated for a long period of time, because this right here was a past level of of resistance, it actually broke that area on a gap and then came back down to on retest. But once that area was fully fully broken, pretty much anywhere after that break is considered as a, a bar opportunity. Once you had areas kind of like this, so like I wouldn't actually enter like all right here because I'm looking at your estimate and EMA is still actually pointing on a downtrend. So like it's not actually ready yet to pull back up. So when it actually crossed, which was around here, around this area right here, based off of like this candle right here. So once that actually happened, that cross happened, you could have went on lower time frames around this area right after that point. All right, so like we have a, a confirmed cross on H1. Let's let's highlight that area. Let's highlight that area. All right, boom. All right. So now after that, let's break it down to like M30 if we can see what what kind of other opportunities we could get on a lower time frame since that area is pretty much. Um, we already confirmed that error on on a daily chart. We already confirmed that error on on H one already. And next, we got to pretty much break it down to an entry time frame, um, because mainly because I, I enter a lot of times on like M thirty, M thirty or M fifteen. Like it, it all depends on like how the formations are going and, pre and pretty much if you can actually analyze the market good enough with your candlestick analysis. So it, it really all all depends. So like when it, um, when it comes to like me actually entering a certain place or exiting a certain place, it's it depends on every single um, situation on how the market is actually forming and everything. So this right here is the area, all right? All right here. And, and this area was the same area that the cross of the SMA and EMA was on, on the H1 chart. And beyond there, like, we had a bullish a bullish move, which was, like, kind of, like, right here. Or even that bullish engulfing, which happened, like, right here. Right, right here was pretty straight. Uh, right here you guys see it so that that would have been my, my entry point right here as far as that's when I I would actually press buy right when that on that market actually made that kind of move show me that there is more buyers in the market at that point in time so um, that that would have been my entry opportunity for that order and beyond there I would have been like maintaining that order probably on the same time frame so um, make sure that I could stay in profit for that, that entire time period that I was inside this trade Yo, leave your mics. Yeah. Why do you have those levels? Um. So, the, does everybody understand as to why um how I actually broke down that that entire um trend? Yes. Okay. I'm not gonna tell you guys my estimate. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not gonna tell. First of all, I'm not gonna tell um you guys like my estimate in EMAs like just join fucking Wall Street Academy like literally <laughs> like that's, that's like once you join that then you have everything that you fucking need you know what I'm saying like simple as that I'm not gonna give you guys everything that I have on a free webinar just be a, just be a member and 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 then get everything forever keep it simple um what kind of order would that have um, the main order that I actually place are instant executions. Like, I, like I do pending orders here and there, but in reality, like I probably do them like, um, probably like whenever I'm like scalping or something. Um, but I don't really like place it on like my everyday trades. Like, you know, like everything is mainly like instant executions. How did you choose? Huh? When you use, um, sorry, when you use your instant, um, when you use your instant execution, uh, what sort of candlesticks do you look at? Do you look at candlesticks at all? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Person? Yeah, of course. No, no, no. Um, everything matters. You know what I'm saying? Like candlesticks and everything. Like it, it all depends on on how you actually know how to read them. But um, it's, I mean, I go a, a lot more in depth with that. Um, on like the, the actual course personally. 
But um, right. you know that that right there was like an example and everything on like why I would enter it in on this order right here. You know, what I'm saying like for all those confirmations. Right. Okay. All right. Sure. Um, how did you choose USDJPY to be your pair? Personally, like I used to do odd USD. Like if you guys have been following me for a while and everything, I was in odd USD for what like an, an entire year. Like I did it from when I first started trading mainly, and then all the way up until like last year, um, last year September or October, and then pretty much. I kind of noticed that like whenever I'm analyzing, I'm analyzing a lot faster and a lot more accurate um, when I'm actually, you know, like in like fast markets. So like if I'm on AU, what do you think is happening to me if I'm analyzing and, and the charts going too slow? <laughs> you probably just focus. <laughs> huh? No. <laughs> what do you guys think is happening if I'm, if I'm analyzing fast up here, but the charts are moving slow as hell? Not even that, like that, but also like, you don't trade, not, nah, um, I kind of like over trade or like over analyze because I'm in like, I have so much time to analyze throughout that entire time period because, you know, it's moving slow enough that I could just keep on analyzing, keep on analyzing, keep on analyzing, keep on analyzing. And then it's not even like where I'm supposed to be entering at, you know what I'm saying? So like, exactly like too much anticipation. So it's like me actually going on UJ, I'm actually going with a pair that, that, that like is, is, is is developing as fast as, as I am. You know what I'm saying? So like as as fast as it's moving is the same the same way how I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? Oh wait, you would exit. So so so, um, so yes, yeah, so like and then like if you want to actually choose a pair that like suits you and everything, like it's really all based off of your personality. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what that's the biggest thing. Like that's what it's really based on, like your personality. It's like if you're a person that is let's say really impatient, um I would say just first, just like, you know, Analyze on the on AU first if you're trying to get better at, at, at your technicals because pretty much I traded AU for an entire year But that was good because my technicals got really really good because I had so much time to actually Apply my, my technicals and everything and watch it play out So I didn't have to actually you know place it and then things just happen kind of like this You know what I'm saying so like AU and everything like it kind of builds up your um, Technical skills until you're actually able to analyze fast as hell and see things um, You know faster than it's actually moving so on UJ, it's moving faster and everything on then AU. So pretty much like it, it plays its part or plays out and everything pretty fast. Who, who you, who you, who you do your time frame correlation? What? <laughs> who, who you do your time frame correlation? <laughs> I don't know what it means. Um, maybe how? How do you do your time frame? I mean, like t time frame cor correlation. I'm not gonna really get in into too much personally because, like, that's like the the um, main thing on what I actually trade um, based on. So, like, you you would have to just join Wall Street Academy if you want to actually get all that kind of information. Yes, I've been studying AU. Yeah, um, literally, like AU would definitely like help you out big time. Like, if you're not like um a person that is like in, in a rush to fucking just get on the charts and like start making money and everything, and you really want to actually get good. Um, I would definitely like recommend trading um, AU for a good amount of time, so so you get better at your technicals before you go on to fast affairs. How differently do you trade from Ryan? Um, nowhere close. Like as you can see, props are different. Everything is different. Um, consistency is just like different also. So I mean, overall, like I just see the mark a lot more different than he does. So, you know, big difference. You can't you can't really compare the two. Um, what was the name of the Islamic broker w without fees? Actually, it's not that easy to get a Islamic account. Keep in mind, it's based off of religion. Um, I'm not, um, from, I'm not Islamic at all. But at the same time, like you know, I have um, people that work at the broker, so I was able to, to get that account. What's my what's my win percentage? Um, just to see what's possible. I mean, like I. My overall win percentage is probably like around 70%, uh, 70% through like around 75%. Um, that's like overall, but um, I mean, I've, I've I've had trade times when um, I go like 30 and 0, like 40 and 0 and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? But it all depends on everything on how, on how much I'm trading and how aggressive that I'm actually trying to actually make money. Um, what's your win percentage on, just to see what's different on, how do you use your stop, sorry stuff from using 100 lots? Um, okay, so like people don't understand like who wants to, to trade a hundred lot here? Who would want to trade a hundred lot here? Type yes. That, that would be too I wanna I wanna see how many people say yes though. I 
<laughs> right? Like, people want to be, like, this is what I always say. People want to trade 100 lots, but they ain't got 100 lot emotions. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you ready to, to see, like, 10K, 20K in drawdown? No. I yeah. doubt that. <laughs> so, you, I doubt you have that much fucking, um, like, di um, discipline on yourself and able to actually control your emotions because personally like, I don't have that kind of that kind of emotional um, support honestly I'm not going to do it I'll probably just um, close out after like one pip honestly 100 lots I'm not with that mm. I think that's exactly what Sean was saying uh, in, in, a, in a post that he posted recently he was saying uh, you know you're afraid to see a 40 pip uh, drawdown yet you expect to gain 400 pips or 100 pips or something yeah. like that I mean it just really makes sense yeah, yeah, like, if I if I was supposed to do, like, 100 lots personally, like, I would have to have, like, um, first of all, good leverage, because, like, a lot of leverage is, is not going to actually, um, like, stay consistent past, like, 50K or even 100K and everything. Like, if, if, if you can find a broker with, like, 1 to 500 leverage past $500,000, then you're lit. Like, then I'll, I'll do 100 lots, but if not, then I'm not going to even bother. Um... Do I still use ADX? Like I, I used it the other day actually when I was um I was trading the UJ. Um I had posted on Snapchat, but pretty much I was up like two K and pretty much I had to actually go on on ADX so I could see that momentum shift inside a market because the price action was not clear enough for me to analyze it. So it really all, all depends. Um do I ever go to sleep on trades? Um it depends. It depends on how much how much profit I'm in and depends on what lot size I'm using. So like if I'm in drawdown, um I'm probably not gonna be going be going to sleep. I might sleep for like an hour or some shit. But like, if I'm in drawdown and everything, I, I do not like to um go to sleep all too much. So, <laughs> but if I'm in profit, like you know, like 40 pips or 60 pips or even 100 pips, like I'm I'm taking a full sleep, eight hours. I'm knocking out. Hold on. Uh, where do you at? Sweating bullets. I think. What's the point? Yeah, so, so like. I'm, if you want to trade a hundred lots, like that, that's cool and everything. But like, what kind of lifestyle do you plan on? on or, like, what kind of lifestyle are you living to actually want to trade a hundred lots? So like, and you really want to make the money like that fast? Like, it doesn't really like, like, like make sense to me. Like, you don't have like fucking jets and and, and all kind of other creations and everything to even want that kind of income daily. Like, personally, I think like like five lots and everything, twenty pips, five lots, or even forty pips, five lots. That that's fucking good. That's great. That's over two k a day. That's sweet. That's more than what a lot of people make, honestly, a day. And the average income a day is probably like around $120. Do I, do I hold trades over the weekend? Um, same, um, same concept as me holding a trade if I'm sleeping. Like, it depends on how much pips I'm up and what's my lot size. RDS trade, 600 lots, one trade. I don't know who RDS is personally, and I don't really care to know. Um, how long usually does it take for UJ Gap to fill? UJ Gap, like, they had gaps that um took, like, around a month to fill before. But normally, like, UJ Gaps fill, like, in a couple hours or something like that. But I, I personally wouldn't really, like, look forward to gaps every single Sunday because not all gaps fill on time. So, like, there was times and everything when... People that actually traded that UJ gap, which was like somewhere around like right here. Hold on, let me try to find it. It was a big ass move. Hold on. It was somewhere over here. Oh, this is on the way in the chart. Where's that gap at? Here it is. This, this is the gap. So this was one gap on USJPY that was not filled. As you can see, like the wicks and everything didn't even touch. There's a gap between there. Hold on. So this gap took an entire month to fill. That was the gap, and it took an entire month to fill. So, personally, like, I wouldn't really, like, depend on gaps all too much because some of them fill on time, some of them don't. Some of them would actually have you in drawdown for over <laughs> 776 pips.
And here go the um, gap on UJ that I was actually trying to find. Yeah, it was like a 30 pip gap or like a 26 pip gap, but it took an entire month to fill. Same concept as, as UJ. What was my best trade? Um, okay, so do you consider my best trade like pip wise or money wise? Uh, pip wise. Pip wise. Um, pip wise. I think my best trade was was like around 140 pips or 180 pips, something like that. But um, it was like a crazy like lot size at the time. But um, my best trades all at at, at one time was like around two. 2,000 pips uh, when I caught in a week. I, I caught 2,000 pips in a week, um, like last year, October. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. What about your, your weekly target? Uh, what's your weekly target pip wise? My my, I don't have a, I don't have um goals. I don't have goals in in trading because every single trading day is different, and um I just take what I can right. get because once you do have goals, like you 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 might over trade. Like you might make. Like let's say your your goal for the day is like around five hundred, like you, you might make like, like like around three hundred or three fifty or even like four hundred or even four fifty, but then you might take like one more trade, just kind of like want to get over that five hundred mark, and then fuck up. So it's like whatever the market does give me for whenever it's it, it's the most clear to me, that's when I'm actually on the charts trading. Um, my best right. trade, my best trade money wise was that thirty five k week that I had like last year, um, and then beyond that, I, I invested that into Bitcoin and everything. Can you show us an example of an entry breakdown from the four-hour chart to the fifteen-minute chart? Um, first of all, um, you know, like you should never ever say an exact time frame to break it down on. As far as like, you could say, okay, like break down four-hour chart to a lower time frame or something, because it it, it depends on how how clear that that time frame is on the fifteen-minute chart or even the M thirty chart. So you got to always be open to, you know, like enter entering on different time frames, not only the fifteen-minute chart. That's that's a that's a big thing. So some people and everything get so stuck on one time frame that, that they lose track of like, you know, like there's other time frames on the chart that can give you different data um, to actually get in on the same exact trend. You know what I'm saying? So do I enter? I, I, I would never and ever, I've never ever have entered on the H4 or H1. That, that's for one. Um, The best time frame to, to analyze AU1 is like the daily time frame. But, but AU... But AU is a very very consolidated pair so like that pair is going to be um you know it, it consolidated for what like a year and a half inside the same zone you know what i'm saying so like i wouldn't really like like expect a trending market on au all too much because the trends and everything are real real quick so it's not like an overall main trend okay so like i'll break down a setup based off of the off, off the h4 time frame real quick on uj for y'all um let me just expand this this over here hold on all right real quick okay so quillen traders traders always post about making 50 to 100 percent per year what if you have a thousand dollar balance that that would suck i would at least want to take 1000 to 100k in that year um marty first of all like it's it's not really smart to think think that way <laughs> you're trying to think of a hundred a thousand dollars to a hundred k, you know what I'm saying? Like, so like you want your balance to start off as a thousand dollars and then end in a thousand, and then a hundred thousand dollars. That's what you want your balance to be like. First of all, that means that you're not withdrawing. You're you're accounting for all your, your you, all the losses and everything that you're gonna actually get up to that hundred k because you might get up to like ten k and then and then lose and then I'll break it down to like five k after that. Get up to like 7k and then break it down to 2k and then 2k to like around 15k and then 15k to, to like around 7k. You got to be super fucking consistent to like really want to actually like keep that money in inside your broker the entire time as it gets up to 100k. You know what I'm saying? Like you could withdraw over time. You know, like if you got it, that thousand dollars up to like around 10, on 10k, okay, withdraw 5k now and then build that up. After that, withdraw again. You know what I'm saying? Like keep keep that flow going because the entire time that that, that you had that thousand dollars in your account and you want hundred thousand dollars like it could happen you could get a hundred thousand dollars worth of withdrawals but i wouldn't really just not withdraw the entire time while building that on that account up to 100k though because you you're gonna lose profit you know what i'm saying that's what it is like you're gonna have losses on the way also and i'm pretty sure like your losses are gonna be pretty much a lot 
a lot bigger than your wins. You know what I'm saying? Just from how you're you're thinking already. So like the mindset portion of it is a huge thing. How how do you use Fibonacci retracement in UJ? So like in the UJ, hold on. Um, let me just break down this chart real quick for a person um on like the H4 time frame. All right, so like let me just find like a setup real quick, guys. Okay, so let me just clear off my chart real fast, actually. All right. All right, so bomb. Okay, so um, this right here shows an uptrend structure, break structure onto a downtrend structure, right? So overall, we had a break of structure somewhere like right here. Um, if you want to actually find that average of this entire area right here, which was at this little wick right here, which pretty much every single thing that happened beyond that point, which is all test candles. So like support was not broken at this point in time. You know what I'm saying? So like it was actually considered as a higher low point when it, when it actually went like right here in respect to 30.2, 0.8, point B. And, it, and then you actually have that counter trend on your Fibonacci. So at 30.2. So like that is your higher low point for, for this entire area, which means that this right here is the main area that has to be broken for the breaking structure. All right. So bum. So we had now what, a higher high point, right? So once a higher high point did form, which was like right here, you, you want to actually um like highlight that average area, which is going to be off this wick because it touches like all the wicks on that entire area. So then we had our Fibonacci um, pulled out point A, point B, all the way up here. So then you have 100% retrace, which is just a full retest of that entire area, which does not count as you know a higher low point. It's just considered as a full retest of that same level of support. So that area was still being respected. So beyond then, we had a lower high point form. That lower high point was considered as a I think a, I think a 38.2 retracement. Uh, yeah, like, like around a 38.2 retracement right here. So around 30.2 retracements, you're looking at a very, very aggressive push, which happened like right here. Boom. That push actually broke structure and then made a new low, which was right here. Boom. That low was was actually formed. So once that actually low point actually did form, as you can see, on bearish candle, bullish candle, pull out your fibs again, point A, point B. And when we're actually at, we're measuring our counter trend, which is all the way up here. 38.2 retrace again, right? So like then after that, we have to actually find some sort of setup that can tell us that, that there's more sellers in the market than buyers at that point in time. Let's look at, at this setup like right here. You have this setup right here because it actually broke this low point of, damn, hold on. It broke this low point of this, this bullish candle beyond here. We knew that there was more sellers in the market at that point in time. So let's then break it down to like around M31st because that's our first entry time frame, all right? H4. So beyond beyond there, this this right is our setup on the higher time frame, and after that we had we're looking at this time frame structure now, which is on the M30 structure. So on this time frame structure, we then had a low point that that was then created. Then we could also pull out our fibs once this area was created. Let's pull out our random line right here. This right here is, is a new low that was actually made. Boom. So then we had our fib not to pulled out point A point B. After that we had a third a thirty eight point two retrace on this time frame. Same concept as the higher time frame. Um, after that, we had uh, some type of candle setup that pretty much says that there was um, sellers in the market. And at that point, that is our entry for that entire push. So beyond there is is when you're actually able to learn how to maintain orders and everything unlike that. You know what I'm saying? Like I teach all that in Wall Street Academy, but uh, you guys get the concept of like what I'm doing now is the main thing that I'm trying to show you guys. All right, so does does everybody understand this like right now? Who the hell's Conrad? I know the way you apply your fibs. Um, why don't you go from a certain lows? Because that's how I I apply them, and that's the way how I um, look at the market. You know what I'm saying? So like that's what separates me from a, a lot of people inside this niche, just from how we look at the market. So like that's just my ways on how to look at the market. So I don't, re I don't go based off of how every er everybody else does it. Er everybody else has their own way on how they do things, but this is just my way. Um, why there is not an example of scalping on WSA because I don't because my students and everything um, once they actually have knowledge on how to do everything like then they'll actually be able to scalp also, and you would know that if you're in Wall Street Academy. You know what I'm saying? So simple as that. Like, and people already know like I'm a very very upfront person. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna be all nice with you and everything inside this shit because this is what I do. You know what I'm saying? So it's either you do it one way or, or the other way or or get it incorrect and fucking lose money. <laughs> All right, so overall trend from weekly, daily, H4, or the, um, it depends. Uh, <laughs> Taylor, it, it depends also. 
it depends on the pair like i said like every single pair has a different time frame that is analyzed good on like you can't use the, the um same the same breakdowns on uj on like how you would use on gj or or a or um and you and stuff like that because they're all different they're, the volatility rates and everything of all pairs are going to be different when it comes to every single pair period did i leave everything affects i did leave everything affects um mainly because you know like it started feel kind of like a job you know and once once anything feel like a job to me i cancel that shit out <laughs> i cancel it out i'm not gonna want to actually do things on somebody else's time that's about it you know what i'm saying like that's just like more just like my entrepreneurship side you know being brought out so at the end of the day like if you are in wall street academy like i'm still gonna be post um daily analysis in wall street academy like the same way on how i, I did everything affects but it's just gonna be more on my time instead of you know somebody else's time The best time frame to analyze USD CHF on is going to be the daily time frame because that on um, that pair is a little bit more volatile than UJ. So so you got to like, cancel out all that all that noise that's shown on on CHF, and then bring it to a like, higher time frame that, which shows a more like broader view of it. What's my favorite trading book? Um, I don't really have a favorite trading book honestly. Like I just I'm just on the chart. So like I don't really like like base my like, my knowledge off of somebody else's or a book. Um, all my knowledge is literally just chart experience. Do I trade EU? I don't. I, I I traded EU a couple months ago. I made like five hundred dollars on like a five lot, and after that, I was done. Like I don't know. Like I just don't like how it moves. It moves like real, like the the the, the flow of it. Like it's kind of weird to me. You know what I'm saying? So like I don't I don't like trade things that you know like are kind of iffy. And and um EU also actually jumps a lot. You know what I'm saying? It, it has a lot of spikes and stuff like that. And you know. I'll, I'll do that on, 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 on UJ, but on EU, it's not, it's not a pair that I pretty much, like, really analyze to that extent, so I'm not going to try to test it out. How do I control my emotions when I, I live trade? For one, um, you got to think of trading like just numbers. It's, it, it's literally like a video game that if you get really good at, you will fucking make money. You know what I'm saying? But um, if, you're, if you're trading it like, let's say, um, let me just trade and just like, make a, a fucking shit ton of money, then you're going to um, lose money more than likely because you're only thinking about money. When trading is just mainly based on a knowledge, like... People think that if they if you have a ton of capital and everything, they don't think that that capital can ever go away. But you could blow a 10k account, a 20k account, uh, a 50k account, 100k account, a million dollar account could still blow. You know, so like if you don't have the knowledge, then you can't really apply shit. You're just literally just gambling at that point. When people people in this niche at times are cheap as shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is, and um, they don't realize that like like you guys have everything on a silver platter. You know what I'm saying? Like literally, like when I started trading, like it was, it was no kind of courses, nothing like that. So like it, everything was 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 mostly on just experience. When you guys have like groups and everything all over the place and shit like that, like you know, especially like how um I actually organize like Wall Street Academy, like students and everything, like they don't have to act, ever really go anywhere because they actually know how I trade like to the T a lot of times. That's why on some students at Wall Street Academy, like they some students get the same entry as me or a better entry than me at times. Which is dope as shit, you know what I'm saying? So, it kind of comes to show you that like knowledge and everything is everything. What's my average drawdown per trade? Um, my average drawdown honestly is like, is like around probably like seven pips or even like five pips. At times, I go instantly in profit. So it all depends on how you actually know how to break down the charts and work and work on with the time frames to even get those kind of entries. So like, if you can't, you know, like use time frame correlation, then you're not gonna get get good entries. That's what it is. You're not. That's why, like, a lot of scalpers and everything, well, a lot of swing traders, actually, like, they don't even drop down um, under the H4. So they're seeing, like, 80-pip drawdown and 100-pip drawdown, which means that they're not going to really up their, their lot size, you know, like, in time. Like, they might use, like, a standard lot or even a two lot, but you won't see a swing trader using, like, a 10 lot all, all too much because, you know, like, they they see fucking drawdown, you know. And the way how I trade, like, I could trade the kind of lot size that I use because I don't see that much drawdown, so... I have less risk on my account than a lot of people. Um, keep in mind, like the I don't really use indicators. Um, that, that that's the big thing about me. Like I don't use RSI all too much and stuff like that. Yes, this is recorded and, and it's gonna be on YouTube as well. But like I I trade this off mainly technicals, which means that I'm looking at at, at, at price action and, and, and then beyond there, like I'm doing my mark of like how I did on this chart just now. You know what I'm saying? It's raw price and raw price is the the best thing to even look at when you're actually trading. Compared to actually having an, an indicator on your chart or, or even like certain indicators on your charts actually make you want to see something that's not really there. The, the main things I have on, on my chart a lot of times is just like my fibs, 
my um moving averages, my, my two moving uh, moving averages that I do use, and um and what else? I mean, yeah, and then I, beyond that, I'm just drawing on my charts. You know what I'm saying? And then making a case out of what I see on on the charts. Do I swing trade? I swing trade every now and then if I have the ability to, and if I can maintain orders long enough. Do you wait for a low high to form um, on entry, or can I enter at 23.6? On um, 23.6, honestly, it forms a lot of con consolidation zones, and um, I wouldn't really enter off of that all too much because that's that means that you're more exposed to to actually seeing a lot of drawdown because your stop loss is, is super high. So those and everything that actually um like like seeing my charts and everything like you guys know that like th those are, are my settings that I use for my fibs. If you guys want to copy that down like real quick. Yeah, so those are my fib settings, mainly because um I have like I use all the um ratios and everything to some extent. You know what I'm saying? I don't to some extent. I use everything to a certain extent for a different reasons at different times in different situations inside a market. Everything is just it depends on all the situations that I come across. So um I even have like my red ones, which is at one twenty percent and one and one hundred and ten percent for my stop loss areas. So you guys can actually take advantage of that as well. All right. So what helped me with, with my psychology? My psychology was, was helped out just by not being on the charts 24-7 because people think that if you're actually... Um... Yo, Alex, really? Don't get kicked off, man. So so if you guys, like, um, know, like, the psychology and everything, it, it's, it's on a person because if you're on the charts 24-7, then you're going to have bad, bad um, psychology. You know what I'm saying? Because you're always going to be just trying to make money every single time. But in reality, just try to actually get out there and find a fucking hobby or something to get your mind off the charts. Um, I'm mainly an intraday trader. Mainly an intraday. Yeah, if you overcomplicate the charts, like the charts, trading is simple. Not hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's simple. Is it easy? It's not easy, but it's simple though. The, the concept of trading and how to actually analyze it and everything is simple. Beyond there, it's hard to actually get over the, the obstacles that you're gonna come across, greed, revenge trading, and, and all the other shit. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people forget about that when they're actually starting to trade because they're thinking about the money, 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 money. But there's, but there's a lot of other things that you gotta take in consideration as well. Is it realistic to become profitable and consistent in um, two, three months? Um. I wouldn't say like to rush the process because everybody has a different um, time period on when they actually understand everything. You know what I'm saying? So like a person saying, I want to understand it in two months or three months, you already you already have a bad mindset. That's just what it is. Like, you already have a bad mindset if you're thinking two months, three months, or even putting a t like a time frame on when you actually are supposed to grasp everything. Um, I, I, I see if a retest is done mainly because it either forms some sort of transition phase on that lower time frame and then actually goes from there. But um, I wouldn't actually base it off of much. Like I have to actually correlate the lower time frame versus the higher time frame to even know that, that an area on the higher time frame is actual area of support. Approximately how much money do I keep in my account? Um, um, I mean, on, on average, it's, it's above like 30K. How many hours do you give training trading every day on average? Um, for one, see, look, like whenever a person is putting a time on on something, then they're gonna fuck up. You know what I'm saying? A time on when you're supposed to grasp everything, you're gonna fuck up. A time on when you're supposed to stay in trades, you're gonna fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Or even having a time period on how long you give trading a day. Like if you actually enjoy trading, then you're not gonna give trading a, like a, a time frame on when on when you're supposed to start or, or end. Just fucking trade until you're fucking done with it, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't put a time limit on it because you know every trading day is gonna be different. Um, why traders are afraid to talk about taxes? Um, I mean, I don't know, but I'm not an accountant, so it's like we can't really give somebody else financial advice if we're not, you know, accountants. <laughs> that's what it is, man. Um, what do you think about long-term trading? As far as what, like short, like 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 what, like short, small trades or small volume or what? I 
I'm asking because you're not looking at charts all day. Um, okay, so like, if I'm, I might see setups throughout the entire day, and be on there like I'm just like gradually, just like looking for an entry, but I'll just kind of like glance at my phone every now and then because MP4 is like so accessible. You know what I'm saying? So I could just you know go throughout my entire day, um, look at the charts here and there, and still have a good view and everything on like where I'm supposed to enter or exit. Let's see, let's say I see a bearish engulfing on resistance in the H4 time frame. What am I looking for on the low time frame? For on the on the low time frame, kind of like what I just shown. You're 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 looking for a low time frame structure, which kind of like like what I showed like right here. This right here was based off of the lower high point on the H4 time frame, and then on the low time frame after that point, I'm seeing some sort of lower high point also, and then I'm getting in based off of this move as well because it, it showed me some sort of bearish type of um, candle setup, which I was comfortable with, and I'm flowing along with the main trend, seeing that I already had a break structure on that higher time frame, which is going to be H4 in this example. It was right here. So we had a break structure for those that actually are just coming on. We had a break structure here. The first a lower low point form, the first lower high point form, and that is where I pulled out my fibs. And then once I actually had that that area highlighted, I, bro I broke it down to a low time frame such as M30, and that's when I actually entered the, the trade based off of like my candle setups, which I which which you guys seen earlier. What if you are looking for on daily? Um, if you're looking at structure on a daily, um, then you could break it down to like H1, and then at, and then beyond that, then you could just break it down even more. But like, I wouldn't go from the daily to H4 because it's, it's kind of too close to me. So like, I'll go down to like daily to the H1 because it showed up a lot more details to actually be able to analyze that. What is your 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 number one risk management rule? My number one risk management rule is that um um cut losses early. <laughs> cut losses early because sometimes a person would say they want to be in drawdown for, for for 20 pips like mentally and then those 20 pips would be like around 50 pips by the time that, that, that they're actually done with that trade so they'll actually just like lie, lie to themselves when the trade get, gets close to, to their stop loss area and then expand that stop loss even more to you know like have more hope on that, that trade going in, in their favor and then beyond there they're actually in super drawdown so like overall just learn how to cut losses early um when it's not really going in your favor and when you feel uncomfortable with it so if you go in a trade if you go in a trade feeling, you know, some sort of anxiety or some type of, you know, like doubt, then, you know, I would definitely say just close out that trade and just wait for the next trade. Yeah, praying praying to, to the pip gods, <laughs> literally. How big are your stop loss on average? Um, On average, it's like around like seven pips or five pips a lot of times because like my entries and everything are kind of on point, you know what I'm saying? So like, I don't really see like that much drawdown. Yeah, like... <laughs> I don't really see that on, on, on that much drawdown. So like that's why I'm able to use the kind of lot size that I do use now because if your drawdown is not much, then you can up your, your up your lot size because that's what it's all it's already based on. A person that sees a lot of drawdown, then they're not gonna have a lot of uh, volume on, on on their trades because you know they're experiencing a shift in a negative before they go positive. Um, what is the difference between your style and Astro FX? Astro FX actually um, is more swing traders. Like they don't really intraday trade like how I intraday trade, and um, they don't apply, you know, an analysis to all time frames like how I do. I actually know how to take advantage of the, the M1, M5, M15, M30, H1, H4, um, daily, you know, weekly, and so on. You know, like that's how I trade. You know, but um, you know, they don't really drop down um, beyond like the H2 a lot of times. I mean, like, I, I broke down, like, where I would actually break down the chart from to actually get a, a really good entry. So, like, when this this video is on YouTube, then you can actually go back and everything and rewatch it, take notes and everything, and go from there. But, yeah. Hey, Q, Pierre. Yo, Pierre, what's good, bro? <laughs> um, where did you learn your psychology part from in trading? Literally just, like, just experiencing life, man. Just experiencing life and then kind of um just realizing that, like, things that you actually like things that are going on, on on the outside of trading and then trying to actually bring that to the charts are going to fuck you up so like keep trading separate for, from every single thing that you're doing in your real life i'm saying so like don't bring your emotions on on the charts because that's going to take effect meaning that you're going to lo lose money every single time that, that you're on the charts more than likely it's literally just experience man will i come to canada on in the future um um i would love to go to canada you know what I'm saying? like once i have well, we have students there, like around six or seven students in Wall Street Academy in in Canada right now. But you know, to actually do a five course, a five a five day course there, I would need like around ten to twelve students. You know what I'm saying? Like, just to even be able to fly there. 
Yeah, Texas, the same thing. So, like, I tell everyone, like, as long as a, a person can actually gather, you know, like, 10 people, 12 people, or even um, 15 people, um, you know, for, like, a five-day course, then, you know, I'm all for it. So, like, 10 people and everything in the U.S., but outside of the U.S., like, like around um, 15 people, a minimum 12 people. Because I need an actual, like, a nice group. Like, I, I'm not going to fly somewhere and teach just one person. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's saying Texas. Yeah. Nah, I fuck with Texas, man. Like, y'all got some good-ass food. I can't lie. Like, yeah. I fuck with the tacos, too, man. The tacos is lit. Um, how... I'm sort of curious. Um, do you... When, when it comes to the fundamentals, how much do you use your fundamentals okay. in your trading? Um, all right. One second. Um, how do I gain confidence in trading? Um, the confidence comes with understanding. Once you have the full understanding of trading, then you then that will actually build your confidence in trading. But if you have no kind of understanding as far as this plus this equals this, then you're not gonna have the confidence to to, to trade like how you want to trade. Simple as that. But um, you said what again? We said. Um, but like how how often like with the fundamentals? Fundamentals. How much of, of, of news, yeah. Personally, I don't look at fundamentals to, to that extent. Like I I really care less about news. Um, I I I only really care about FOMC and, and NFP. Um, beyond that yeah. is just like knowing that that your technicals is fucking on point. If your technicals is on point, then um, you you don't really have to look at every single fucking news event that comes out because in reality, you know, the market is, itself is showing you um the volume between buyers and sellers. So the the news events are are going based off of the actual market itself. So once your um technicals are on point, then it'll flow along with the um news and everything that's coming out. Because the only time that I I I, I really look at news is knowing that NFP is coming up, which is, which is kind of like towards the end of the month, or looking for FOM, FOMC dates and everything, which is like around on Wednesdays on. I think it's every quarter, I think. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's that's the only real, like, the fundamentals and everything that I really, like, pay attention to. All right, okay. Cheers. Yeah. Um, which two news? I said NFP, which is non-farm payroll. That happens the first Friday of, of every single month. Um, and then beyond that, like, if I... All right, gosh. Let me show you guys. If you go on forexfactory.com, then you will see... Oh, let me see... All right, so we have Friday the third, so next week yeah, Friday. Yeah, next week Friday. Yeah, so you have, you scored on here on Friday. Is it the third? Hmm? The third, right? Third. Yeah. So all right here. So this right here says unemployment rates. So all all this right here is pretty much like a non-farm payroll shit, and then you have the non-farm um, enrollment cha employment change, which is happens like it's pretty much telling you the, the unemployment rates for the entire month. So like every single month and everything is a different rates and everything that, that they got to turn in to actually be processed through the markets. And the market moves over like 100 pips and everything on, on, on most pairs in minutes. So I mean, like, you could you could trade it and then get fucked up if you want to. That, that's your choice. I, I feel like a lot of amateur traders um, trade NFP as far as like they actually wake up to trade NFP if they're amateurs. But people that are actually experienced and everything, like they already know like NFP and everything is cool, but it's not really like, it's not really worth it to that extent. Then, when actually um, you can ma make money on this on normal patterns and like on normal markets instead of just trying to trade high volatile news. Yeah, like people that had had trade NFP before, like they already know like that that shit does not fucking play. 8:30, 8:30 a.m. That shit fucking freezes your fucking computer. After that, you see a huge ass gap <laughs> and a huge ass candle. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't really just like t um like recommend a person to actually trade NFP. If you, if you want to experience it, then go ahead and experience it. But overall, just don't even bother. Just make money on the normal markets. Ha! <laughs> yeah, 10 pips in profit then. Exactly. Exactly. Harmonics. I don't really trade harmonics because um the, the way how I trade, like, a lot of times, um by the time that I have my analysis, like, it's already kind of, like, late or invalid on a harmonic pattern. So, like, once you could trade, like, my style, then you would, you would understand harmonics. Because harmonics is based off of what? Structure and, and on Fibonacci and expansions. So one, so once you understand those three things, structure, harmon structure, Fibonacci, and expansions, then pretty much you will understand harmonics. But if you don't understand those three things, then trading harmonics is literally gonna fuck you up because you're literally waiting for a pattern that's that could be invalid. You know what I'm saying? So just learn how to trade the raw markets mainly. 
Do I trade every day? No, I don't. I trade probably like um, every other week, if anything, if I really plan on buying something a lot, a lot of times. Um, if I had plans to buy something, then I'll trade hard as fuck to, to, make, to make that money. Then after that, I'm good. But I don't trade every day. Like, like, like right now, um, I, I think I saw you looking at a Porsche or something. Yeah, awesome. yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually about to go see the Porsche. Um, yeah, the GT3 fund. <laughs> actually, the GT, the GT3 fund is funded. It's um good. I got, I got, I got the funds for it. You know, this look, this is like a down payment. This is a, this is a down payment, anyways. Um, but it's in San, it's in San Francisco, so I, I'm gonna go see it within um I think the next couple of days. I can show y'all it real quick. Y'all wanna see it? Y'all wanna see it? Yeah, let's see it, bro. Let's go see it. Let's go show it. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right. Let me turn my phone sideways. Right, that's it right there. Sexy. Wow. Nice style of two. <laughs> yeah. Right? So that's the that's the move like right now. You know what I'm saying? Trying to level up on these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Right. I like that. <laughs> All right. What about um? I wouldn't really like look at pair correlation all too much because some people like fail to to see that um like just because GJ and and UJ is in correlation like they feel as if like it goes the same direction hundred percent of the time, but rally like GJ does his own thing, UJ does his own thing, but overall, you know they're going up or down, but you know it has a lot of other movements and everything inside GJ than it does UJ. Huh. Q3, gotta be the license plate. Yeah, I think about it, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, um, I might fly into San Francisco um Monday or Tuesday. So I mean, if y'all like wanna link up and shit, um, I'm with it. How massive? How do massive trades affect the market? Just volume moving. Um, massive trades just just literally just volume moving. That's about it. So like, volume affects the market. So like, if everybody's fucking buying or some shit then obviously, you know, that's going to move the market higher. So think about it that way. I study every day. I study every single day to some extent. But remember, like, I, I teach also. Even the, this webinar is, is me studying. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm always doing something dealing with trading. So, like, I'm literally always on the charts. That's what I'm – I have over, like, 20,000 hours of the chart time alone. Even, like, this this webinar is almost an hour. Another hour, you know what I'm saying? So I'm always doing something with trading. Is trading view still the move? Trader's way is still the move. Um, Trader's way, I still use it if I'm trying to actually like leverage out an account or some shit. But personally, like you know, if you have like a huge, like a bigger account, like I would definitely like recommend the other broker that I use now. So, and if you know like what broker I'm talking about, then I mean definitely shoot for it. It's a um, and they have an Islamic account also on that broker. So you know, I I don't get charged fees anymore. That's why like if you guys see my my, my trades and everything, like they, they have no kind of fees on swaps and commission because it's it's fee free, which is lit. <laughs> how do you attack stop loss hunting? Um, stop loss hunting is fake. Just learn how to use your stops correctly. Simple as that. <laughs> Honestly, like if you don't if you don't know how to use stops and everything, or certain areas of the market actually being um or causing like an invalid trend or something like that then your stop loss are going to be done incorrectly as well yeah no commissions or, or no swaps why did rico leave um i mean doing his own thing you know what i'm saying like everybody has their own goals you know the prevent profit first started off with uh, me and ryan anyways so i mean hey it's back to the originals it is what it is my thoughts on bitcoin i would definitely like recommend people investing in bitcoin you know what i'm saying like kind of like when um like if i had fucking held like my same money that i had in in my account last year when i had did that 35 you know it would have been over 290k based off of, like when it actually went up because i had 56 bitcoins at um 300 dollars 300 dollars per, per bitcoin at that time period and i had 56 of them and i didn't hold it so it's like imagine how i feel now <laughs> you know what i'm saying so like i, I would definitely like, recommend investing in bitcoin because you know the world is changing is and, and it's based on technology you know what i'm saying so like Think about it, like Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency that's actually being implemented in, in like stores and Amazon now. Even at a, even at a Lamborghini dealership, they, they accept Bitcoins now. So <laughs> just imagine in a couple of years. What are the best ways on how to study and backtesting? Just fucking being on the charts. You know what I'm saying? It's like going over setups, going over ways on how you, how you could have entered, 
on why you could enter your reasons, like building your, your reasons for entries and exits. So yeah, do I ever trade gold every now and then, but but, but not too much personally because um it's not really like like like, like my thing. So I stick to, I stick to my pair and then only trade like my pair ninety percent of the time. That's why if you guys see me trade UJ, like I trade UJ ninety percent of the time. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't have to dabble in in other shit because I'm going into a to like. Like, like an unknown market that I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Because every single market moves different. Um, every single market has a different level of volatility and everything. So it's like me actually switching from UJ to like GVP, NZD or some shit. Like I'm actually going to fuck myself because, you know, I don't know how that pair moves and it actually acts. So I'm not going to even bother. So master one pair, make profit every, every single fucking day. Simple. How did you tell your parents this is what you wanted to do? I didn't. I just did it. <laughs> simple as that i didn't tell my parents hey i, I want to do this now nah, like i just if i want to do something then i just fucking do it it's simple <laughs> um nah i'm not gonna go over your NZD like, real quick personally um but okay like i'll go on like real quick before i before i actually end this webinar because it's over an hour right now euro nzd so okay so quick analysis on euro nzd whoa whoa so to even analyze this pair, I would definitely probably start from like let's say H4 first, see how, how things look on that time frame, and after that, see how look how ugly it looks. I would definitely go on a higher time frame because I want to see the most clearest time frame, which is now the daily. You had a break structure here. Beyond that, your first higher low point, and after that, you had your, an uptrend. So like right now, overall, like you just expect you know like new highs at, at this point in time. Um, let's go on weekly. Yeah, it's it's pretty bullish though, and seeing how th how this week closed. This is like. Um, this is the week of last week so it closed it closed bear so this right here is our main level of resistance at this point and um this area was based off of this wick right here Because this right here was the average wick for this entire area. So pretty much I used that area to, to mark it across. The market actually closed right where that level of resistance was, which was a doji. So on last week, it pretty much had a lot of bullish movement. But overall, on low time frames, kind of like what, what you guys seen earlier on like, what was it, the H1 or some shit? It went up and went down within the same entire week. So this area was the starting of the week. This area was like midweek. And this area was the, end, the ending of that entire week. So it pretty much retraced 100%. So could it form a head and shoulder pattern? Possibly it could, but you have to wait until that, that, that next area form, which could take another, like, you know, like four or five days or something like that to actually get, to get more data. But right now and everything, like, um, right now it's at a 38.2%. So, like, if this area does actually find a level of support, you know, you can still expect new high points to actually form with, for um, next week. All right. Now, nah, but... um. At what moment did you realize it's time to get out of society? Um, I mean, like, I, I, I've always wanted to get out of society, honestly, because, you know, I've always had, like, a lot more, a lot bigger dreams than, you know, like, a lot of people that I was around as far as from how I look at things, you know. So I had to actually find a way to actually make more fucking money. And, yeah, I found a way. So me ask, I'll answer a few more questions. Um, what's the cost of Wall Street Academy? Wall Street Academy is four ninety nine a one time fee, lifetime membership, and pretty much you guys get everything that I fucking do. Um, and yeah, so you you also get on um, Wall Street Academy uh, forever and profit things that I do like in the future as far as courses or um, like webinars and all all the, the new trainings that I do actually implement inside the future. But um, beyond that, like my five day courses, um, the five day courses include Wall Street Academy forever and profit and um, the, the the five day period of the course, which is um. Fourteen ninety nine, one thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars, um, lifetime membership overall. And once you're a five day course student, you could actually go into other five day, day courses also and sit in a day for free. You know what I'm saying? Which is dope. So I offer that also for like past five day course students. If, if they want to touch up or like refresh on something, they can actually take a day for free, like later on courses. Um. And uh, where, where would I actually go for my next five day course? Like, I mean. So far, like I just have like my January courses, which is just like in Fort Lauderdale. But if you guys have, you know, other other places and everything that that you do want me to actually travel to, like I'm down for it as long as you guys meet I, I meet the minimum amount of like attendees and everything to actually you know get the course. And I'm, I'm all for it. Flying anywhere, I'm with it. 
just give me a date. <laughs> What's a good start and balance for your account? Um, Randy, I can't tell you a good start and balance, but it's all based off your knowledge. I mean, Wall Street Academy students, like they on average start off at, with like around hundred dollars or even two hundred dollars, even three hundred dollars, even four hundred dollars, like around that that price range or on that um deposit range. But I would definitely um like recommend you actually gain the knowledge first from whoever you're learning from. Um, like if you're learning from me and everything, then you you don't need a lot because I pretty much learn on teaching people how to actually maximize accounts without needing a lot of balance. You know what I'm saying? Because it's really it's really all based off skill. So once you have the skill to actually on on the center market, you don't really need a lot of money to to make money inside the market. Oh yeah, so like when you come down for the Friday course, like I have a hotel that I get discounts at. So um you guys can actually book there, which is dope as shit. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all aren't spending a shit ton of money. But like the cool thing about it, a, a lot of students on average, like well the Friday course on average honestly is, is like around a ninety probably like a good like 90% su success rate. The people that actually have that 10% and everything are people that actually was like super lazy or came to the Friday course wanting to do other shit than fucking get into fucking work. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, so like that's like the su um, su success rate for the Friday course. But like if you guys want to actually get, get, get better at it, I would definitely like say let's go over the entire Wall Street Academy course before we come to the Friday course so you're actually on point because the Friday course is kind of advanced in some sense. So you, that's why there's a prerequisite that has to be done before um, coming to the Friday course. Um, is that your only, oh wait, is that only your style, right? What, is what only my style? Wall, Wall Street Academy is literally all of my style. Forever and Profit is the main brand. Wall Street Academy is literally all of my style, put in one bundle and then that's all me. All right, so, but overall, guys, um, hope you guys enjoyed the uh, webinar, though. Thanks, to everybody, for coming on. <laughs> Thanks, to everybody, for coming on. And um, if you guys want to ask me any more questions, then you guys can actually just, you know, hit my DM or some shit. I don't even know. Um, if you get Wall Street Academy first. Do, uh, all right, so if you get Wall Street Academy first, to upgrade to the Friday course is $1,100. So you're, you're literally just saving $100 by getting the full package. That's it. So you can always upgrade if you want to. All right, yeah, so like, if you guys have any more questions, just hit me up on, on Instagram, um, at QBanks, or on Snapchat, at QBlack, C-U-E-B-L-A-C-K, and at QBanks, C-U-E-B-A-N-K-S. All right, so I'm going to let you all. Peace out. And this this one here will be on YouTube soon. Um, Appreciate everybody. All right, peace out. It's so cute. She's like, all right, man. Peace, peace, peace. Adios, man. All right, man. Peace out.